Fallout Equestria Survivor's Guilt, Chapter 12, Part 3 We reached the atrium when we were met by two Enclave soldiers dressed in power armor. They searched both of us, very thoroughly, and I really hoped that they were just afraid I had weapons stashed back there and weren't some kind of just, uh, well, perverts, before we were escorted up the stairs towards the Overmare's office. When the door opened, I saw the pony I hadn't expected standing there right in front of me. She, or well, I assumed it was a she, was a towering alicorn dressed in modified Enclave power armor that stared down at me. It was the same alicorn I had seen a year before my way to Manhattan, and that wasn't the kind of thing that you forget easily. She stepped aside after a moment to allow us into the Overmare's office. Seated behind the desk was a Pegasus stallion dressed in a white Enclave uniform. He was a dark shade of blue with a slicks back light blue mane with red eyes. Unlike Serenity's eyes, his eyes had no kindness or happiness behind them, only coldness. There was something about his eyes, just as if he was examining everything, or maybe he was plotting something. So, you are the infamous Scootaloo, he said as he got to my hooves, and it struck me just how tall he was as he walked over and looked at me in the eye. I was somehow expecting you to be a little bit taller. Sorry to disappoint you, I said sarcastically as I tried not to look him in the eye. So, you have us. What are you going to do with us? You are going to be taken back to the capital to be dealt with as per the president's orders, he said as he looked at me coldly before turning and resting his eyes on Star. As for you, I'll be dealing with your punishment personally. Well, you've been looking forward to this, haven't you? Star spat at her former CO. Oh, but of course. Like I told you before, no pony under my command is exempt from being punished for treason, he said coldly. Not even my own daughter. My eyes went wide at that. Daughter? Shooting Star wasn't just another Dashite, she was, she was Cloud Chaser's daughter? You were hurting innocent ponies, what was I supposed to do? Follow your orders blindly until you brought the entire wasteland down on us? Star said with a growl. I did what I felt was right, nothing more. The Enclave is the future of Equestria. We bring order, but they didn't understand that. I was hoping my own flesh and blood would, Cloud Chaser said and turned to look at the soldiers. Take them to the security office and lock them in the cells. Yes, sir, the soldiers said as they started to lead us away from the office, and I got one last brief look at the strange alicorn who had remained strangely quiet this whole time. Why did I just get that weird feeling like something about her was just... she seemed familiar. I mean, maybe it could have been just... Uh, maybe my imagination. I mean, it wasn't like I could even see what she looked like under that power armor anyway. We were tossed into the cells and the doors were locked with two soldiers standing inside the office to keep an eye on us. The cells were about as comfortable as the rest of the stable, but just our luck, the cell doors were still working. I looked over at Star, and they had removed her cybernetic wing, leaving her lying onto the bed looking uncomfortable. We could still hear each other, so at least we could still talk to each other. So, let me guess, the personal business was dealing with your father? I said as I looked over at the younger Pegasus, who just grunted in reply. Do you maybe want to talk about it? No, not really. Star said with a sigh as she looked over at me. It's not easy having a pony like that for a father. I can imagine. I said with a sigh. Do Jade and Pureheart know? Yeah, I told them early on when I was dating Jade. I mean, I didn't want to lie to them about that kind of thing. Star said as she turned to look at me. You know, he wasn't really always like this. Before Sunshine and Rainbows, he was a good father. He never tried to get us to join the military and wasn't always so serious all the time, but that changed. So what happened? My mother and sister were both assigned to Navarro when it attacked, and they didn't make it out alive. Oh, dear Celestia, yeah. Oh, that would definitely do it. They must have died in the battle against Little Pip and her allies. Well, just another consequence of war. Man, I hated that. After that, everything changed. Star continued with a sigh. Dad became more distant and poured himself into his work, and I wound up aboard the Nimbus and was aboard when the rebels attacked the R&D facility. They basically conscripted me after that, and, well... That's how I wound up on the ship during the campaign in Winneapolis, and I, I just, 
I couldn't take it anymore. I'm... I'm sorry, Star. I wish there was something I could do to just help. I said with a sigh. I mean, just when it seemed like the Enclave was changing a little, I heard stories like this. I just hope that the Enclave will be stopped for good someday. Me too. I laid back onto the bed and tried to think about anything else other than the Enclave, but something just kept bugging me. There was still something weird about that alicorn. I mean, I know that I didn't remember her from my time above the clouds, but something still felt familiar about her, and I didn't like it. Um, Star, do you know anything about that alicorn that showed up? Oh, uh, you mean Tornado? Star asked, and she looked at me again, and I nodded. Honestly, not really much. She kind of just showed up around the same time that Winter Breeze became president, and officially, she's the head of her security detail, I think. But I don't know why she's here. That was... weird. I mean, I couldn't think of any other reason for Winter Breeze to send the head of her security detail here. I mean, maybe she wanted to make sure that the key was secured, but that was the only explanation that made any sort of sense. We sat in silence for the longest of time, and I, I hated that. It felt like they were just forcing us to wait in anticipation for what was going to happen next instead of actually doing it. They had taken away my pit buck too, so I didn't even know what time it was. After a while, there was a burst of static over the speakers in the office, followed by the same music that had been playing last time. Well, sounds like another time for another speech, I said with a groan. Greetings, Equestria. This is President Winterbreeze, and I have come to speak to you today about a problem that has continued to plague Equestria for years, Winterbreeze said over the speakers. Oh, ponies who like to give long-winded speeches over the radio, I said with a chuckle, which got a laugh out of Star. Shut up, one of the guards said with a glare. I'm, of course, speaking of raiders, Winterbreeze continued. Oh, sure. Some of them band together and create groups like the New Canterlot Republic and the Crimson Empire. But, at their heart, they are all raiders. This scourge has been eating away at the wasteland like a cancer. So today, I ordered the systematic destruction of one such group that has been plaguing the- Wait. What did she mean by one such group? Had there been an attack on Junction Town? Was the NCR even still standing at this point? I looked over at Star and I could tell that she was just as worried as I was. The Marauder Gang, whose recent actions in Reno and other territories attracted the attention of the Enclave. Winter Breeze finished. I felt relief at that at least. The leaders of the Marauders had been brought to the Enclave capital to stand trial for crimes against Equestria. I assure you, my little ponies, justice will be swift and the Marauder Gang will no longer plague Equestria. Okay, I felt a little torn about this to be honest. I heard about the Marauder Gang to be sure, and they were a group of organized and well-equipped raiders that had been attacking the NCR and their allies for years. Heck, apparently they had gone after Silver and Clear Skies a while back. But on the other hoof, did any pony really deserve that kind of treatment? This is the only first taste of what the Enclave will bring to Equestria. We will not stand for raiders, slavers, and corrupt ponies eating away at Equestria. The Enclave stands for Equestria. We are the future, and the future is bright, my little ponies. I assure you that as you are president, I will make sure that no foal has to fear a raider attack ever again. Wow, she really knew how to lay it on thick, didn't she? The worst part was that I could understand why this would appeal to some ponies. She actually genuinely sounded like she wanted to do the right thing and change Equestria. The question then became, what would the new Equestria be like? That was something that I didn't want to think about to be honest, because I mean, Winter Breeze's words sounded good. There was no guarantee that she'd be any better than the Enclave before. Join the Enclave Equestria, side with the future. We will come like a cleansing fire and burn away all those who would threaten this great country. This is President Winterbreeze, signing off. Corrupted generosity. Excuse me? I asked as I looked over at Star. It's something that Little Pip talked about in her book. Star said with a sigh as she looked at me. She used it to describe Red Eye and how he promised ponies a, like a brighter future in return for slave labor. It's what Winterbreeze's speeches remind me of. Great. I said with a groan. If Winter Breeze was anything like Red Eye, then we would have a problem. So, what do we do now? Now? We wait, and hope that we get freed. Star said as she laid back in her bed. I'm gonna get some sleep. You should do the same. We have a long day ahead of us tomorrow.
The next day they took Star away, probably to undergo that punishment that she mentioned, which just left me in the cell alone with two guards. I didn't know how I was gonna get out of this one. I mean, I had certainly worked myself into a corner at this point, and I just had a hope that I could figure something, something out. As I stared up into the ceiling, I heard the door to the office open, and I looked up to see the Alicorn Tornado walking still dressed in her power armor. Leave us, she said as she looked between the two guards. But, ma'am, General, one of them started to say. I outrank him, and I'm ordering you to leave us, Tornado said as she fixed her helmeted face onto the two soldiers. Unless you'd rather be punished for defying a direct order, Lieutenant. No, no, ma'am, uh, we'll leave. The lieutenant said shakily, and he looked like he was about to pee himself. It was... it was almost satisfying, actually. Good. Now, you're dismissed. She said with a stomp of her hoof, which sent the two guards scrambling to leave the room. Who are you, and what do you even want from me? I demanded from the towering alicorn. Scootaloo, it's, it's okay. It's me, Vex. The alicorn said as she suddenly shifted into a changeling. I smiled at that. I remembered Vex when I met him in Crystal City. I just hadn't expect him to come here, but I wasn't going to complain. Star was worried that the Enclave may find you before you finished in Stable 117, so she asked me to stow away on the Vertibuck and infiltrate the Enclave forces. Oh, thank you, thank you. Okay, do you know where they took Star? I asked as Vex started to unlock the door. Your friends are getting ready to her now. We just need to get out of here before the real tornado comes to get you. The Changeling said as he got it unlocked. We'll just have to figure out how to get out of here and pass the Enclave. Yeah, that's easier said than done. I said as I walked out of the cell and Vex changed into Tornado again and put a pair of hoofcuffs on me loosely. Don't worry, I'll get you all out of here safely. I nodded as we headed out. The two guards from before looked at us astonished. General Cloudchaser wants her taken in for interrogation. Tornado said, and the two soldiers cringed and nodded. Uh, understood, ma'am. They said and let us go on our merry way. I cringed as we entered the residential area, and we could hear the sound of a pony screaming in pain even at this distance. I guess that meant whatever they were using on Star was, uh, was working. We found Sherry, Ark, and Gearframe in one of the quarters getting some equipment together. There was a suit of power armor laying onto the bed, along with a dead Pegasus that they had. Good to have you back, Scootaloo. Sherry said with a smile as I checked my battle saddle. Good to be back. Now, we just have to make sure that we all make it out of here alive. I said with a sigh. So, does any pony have any ideas? Well, we do have one, but we need your help to do it. Ark said and nodded to the suit of Enclave power armor. It should fit you. Oh, well, that figures. I said as I checked the power armor. It was actually a little bigger than I was, but it was about my size. I also got this for you. Vex said as he passed me my pip book, and I gave the changeling a smile as I put it to my saddlebags for later. Thank you, Vex. That'll help out a lot. I said with a smile as I fit myself into the Enclave power armor. It wasn't exactly comfortable, but at least it made me look like I belonged here as I adjusted it a little. Alright, how do I look? Terrifying! Ark said as I adjusted the helmet. You're good to go. Here, you'll need this anti-venom. Vex said as he gave me the anti-venom. Just get her out of there into the atrium. We'll be running a diversion. Got it. I said as I put the anti-venom into one of the slots on my armor. I'll be back, I promise. Scootaloo? Cherry said as I turned to look at her. Yes, Cherry? Be careful out there, okay? She said with a soft smile. I nodded and headed out the door. It was time to go.